Hey, welcome back to Witcher Math. This is the first video of the 2015 school year. I'm super excited. And uh, this, these problems came up in class the other day. A few people forgot how they work. So I thought we should make a video about uh, diamond problems and how they work. Okay. Um, like this, right? They came up in our book. They look like that. You got little diamonds. You got numbers in some of them, and some of them are blank. Hmm. Well, you might say, hey, Mr. Witcher, those don't look like diamonds. Those look like X's. Well, here's the thing about that. In your book, they look like this, right? Number, 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 number. Problem is, Unless we're uh, on a computer using some kind of assisted drawing technique that gives us straight lines, this takes a lot of time, and this is not art class. So we can still get it done by making an X. And so that's why you see my X's are diamond problems, even though they don't look like diamonds. Okay, first of all, a lot of you just want the shortcut. Like, hey, Mr. Witcher, I don't have the time to watch one of your videos. So get down to business. Okay, here's the business. You got your diamond problem, you got a number there, we're going to call it X. You got another number there, we're going to call it Y. X times Y goes on top, X plus Y goes on the bottom. How's that for a shortcut? There, you learned what you needed to learn in less than two minutes. Up here it's called the product, down there that's called the sum. Okay, now if that doesn't quite get it done for you, Need more, expl need more uh, explanation? Okay, keep watching then. If not, you got it. You got your little reminder. Move on with your life. That's fine with me. Here we go. So, first of all, why? Why do we do diamond problems? Because they're super fun and mathy? Well, yeah, but there's actually learning objectives here, right? We're practicing integer operations, right? Operations add, subtract, multiply, divide with both positive numbers and negative numbers. Integer ops. That is not a video game. And uh, finally, or in addition to that, in a sneaky way, it's preparing you for factoring polynomials or binomials in algebra kind of sneaky so it's actually teaching you some skills you'll need later but we don't actually practice those things until you get to algebra so that's kind of cool and another funky thing is it's actually practice for solving systems of equations which comes up also in algebra and uh, so the diamond problems gives us a something to refer back to and go, hey, remember you did those diamond problems? Well, check this out. And when you're solving systems, that could be a nice connection for you to make. Okay, so time to figure this stuff out. Let's say we've got a uh, diamond problem here. And we've got a number, which we'll call this one X and we've got another number, we'll call this one y. And like we talked about at the beginning of the video, when we multiply them together, that's the product, and when we add them, that's the sum. Okay, now I'm going to start using some pretty colors. I'm going to use green to show that's multiplication. Ha! Multiplication to get the top and addition to get the bottom, okay? And order does not matter, right? Because it's commutative, the commutative property, commutativity of multiplication and addition. If you want to prove it, just think of this. 3 plus 2 equals 5, 2 plus 3 equals 5, right? Order does not matter. So that's that's why my green arrows go both ways to get products and sum. I chose green because there's a G there. 
Green means go and go big. Okay, go big or go home. Most of the time, uh, multiplying and adding things makes them bigger. So that's why I'm using green. Green is go, go big. Hope that works for you. You can use any color you want. Now, sometimes you're given the product or the sum, and you have to find out what the numbers are. So instead of using green for that, I'm just going to use red because, I don't know, I like red. hope that's okay. So we're going to use red when we have the sum and we subtract to find the missing number. Or if we have the product and we divide to find the missing number. Okay, so that's going to be red is the other thing. I know that's technical talk. What I mean by that is your undoing operations, inverse operations, you're doing the opposite instead of multiplying or dividing, you're working backwards, you get the idea. Okay. So we're going to use red to indicate the working backwards or undoing of operations. Okay. So, time to practice a little bit and see how all this works. Let's do a couple of examples here, then we'll be done. I'll make another video that has a few practice problems for you to test your new skills. And then there'll be a third video about how we can really get into algebra with this, okay? So, here's our first example. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're still with me, I think you're fantastic. Yeah, you're great. Thanks for watching. Um, most people don't watch this far into a video. We're seven minutes in, so you probably didn't hear what I just said, but that's okay. I still like you. Here we go. <laughs> Diamond problem. There's a three and a five. When you're learning something, it's really best to use little numbers that you already know the answers to. So then you could tell if your technique is working or not. And then you trust your technique, and then you use it with more complicated numbers, and you feel good about it. Okay? I'm going to go green here. Product on top. Green. Go big, right? 3 times 5 is 15. And sum on the bottom. 3 plus 5 is 8. Yay! Okay. That's the easiest kind of example, right? How about, since now we know all the answers, we have a completed diamond problem, let's use all those same numbers to do our other types of examples here. Okay, so let's say you've got the 15 and the 3, right? There they are. We know they're going to work. We know the answers are going to be 5 and 8. That's okay. We're learning this skill, right? That's how we're going to check it. We know the answer is going to be 5 and 8. Here's how this works. Can I get this number right away? Nope, no. So order matters in terms of filling in the puzzle here, right? I can't get the bottom until I have the side number. So let's do the side number. I'm gonna have to undo that by dividing. 15 divided by three is five. Now that I have the side number, I can complete my little zigzag here by adding. And of course, we already know the answer is eight. But that's an example of how you can have a red and a green starting up at the top, right? First, you got to undo the multiplication and then add. <clears throat> oh, you can probably guess what's coming up next, right? Not just another example, but an example where we have the sum and one of the numbers. Now, we already know the answer is going to be 3 over here and 15 over here, right? Hey, that's all right. We're testing this to make sure it works. Anytime you come up with a system, you should test it out because maybe it doesn't work, and uh, then you need a new system. Now, we cannot get the product up here until we have this other factor on the side. We need two factors to make a product. Factor times factor equals product. We don't have two factors, so we got to work backwards, right? So I'm going to use red to get the other factor. 
I subtract. I'm undoing. I get 3. Now I have my factors. So I'm going to go green because we're going big. It kind of makes another little zigzag pattern. See how we get the zigzag? Woo! And 3 times 5 is 15, which we already knew was the answer. But the cool thing is we see the system works. That's the most important thing. Okay, because the numbers won't always be easy. You will not always know the answers. So you need a system that you can trust. And here's our final example. Let's say we have the product and the sum. Yikes! We can't do this. Oh no, Mr. Witcher, I can't do this one. Wrong. You can do this. Okay. Ah, sure we need these numbers to get those numbers, if that makes sense. We need one of them at least, right? So one strategy is guess and check. And you can be smart about your guess and check is you start with factors of 15. So you take the, if you have something like this, take the top number and just start making the factors, right? What if I had one and 15, right? Cause one times 15 equals 15. If I add them, I get 16. 16 does not equal 8. So that's not going to work. Let's test the next set of factors that make 15. 3 times 5. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 plus 5 is 8. And that works. So we can you can see how, you, and if 3, 5 didn't work, we could move on to something else. But the bottom line is, Guess and check is a way of solving these, still using a system and not just like being random about it. Okay. Now there's another way to do this, which is a substitution. And that is where we cut this video off. Because that is a separate video all by itself. There's a funky, cool way to use substitution so you don't have to guess. You can just get the answer. That's more of an algebra skill. So we'll save that for another video. That's it for this one. I hope my little system works. Green for go big. Red for go backwards. The other thing. And that is how diamond problems work. You guessed it. Thanks for watching Witcher Math. Please subscribe for more exciting videos. See you in class. Bye.